about my coffee? What are you doing? This book is a TikTok hype if you ain't... What is happening inside this girl? She portrayed her mind. What's up, guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Marquita Lachey XO, and I'm so glad that you guys could be here again with me today. Okay? So, uh, these clips probably gonna be all broken up because it's just been a lot going on. I haven't posted in like three weeks, I don't think, on YouTube. But it's been so much going on. If you can't tell, your girl got new hair don't care i don't even know how to act can you see it i don't know how to act now that i don't have locks anymore but i have been gone because i've been taking down them locks as i'm going to show you in clips or you've already seen now oh and it's like super static because so when the girl did the silk press i already knew like my hair has got to be kind of trained back to straight and I feel like it's pretty straight, but it's super staticky. And I'm so scared it's going to revert back. But hopefully not. This video is just going to cover everything that I've read over the past couple of weeks. I also got a new bookshelf. I still have my other one, but I wanted a white one and I wanted a bigger one. So I now have this one in the back. And I did do a reorganization video. I don't know which one is coming out first. But you guys going to see what you see. Y'all gonna get to see something. But give me one second and I'm gonna grab the books that we're gonna talk about. Guys, I think these are all the books that I've read so far. Besides like um, my Kindle audiobooks. Um, today we're probably just gonna be talking about... We're probably just gonna talk about these for today. I don't know. I might have to talk about Flock because I recently read Flock and I also read another book called All I Ever Wanted, All I've Ever Needed. So we might add those in there too, but these are the books so far. But okay. My wrap up is probably all over the place right now. And if you hear my baby in the background, he is in his room playing with toys and he likes to make a lot of noises. So bear with me, guys. All right. Let's talk about the seven year slip first. So you guys know I was reading this because I think I did a whole reading vlog for this book, but I never really gave all of my feelings about it. But the seven year slip is about, okay, let me tell you, this is not what I expected out of this book. I know this is magical realism, but I was not, I thought originally that her aunt, I don't know if I should say that, um, I thought originally that she was visiting her aunt, but then come to find out that's not that's not exactly what's going on in here. And this whole magical being of somebody she's never seen before from seven years of her past is in the apartment that she is now living in from her aunt, if that makes sense. This is her aunt's old apartment. Clementine is her name, and she is now living or moving into the apartment where this stranger happens to be in um when she wakes up she sees this stranger she's like oh who is this and he tells her why he's there and her aunt has always told her that this apartment had a magical feel to it and special things just happen in here so you never know what you're gonna get while living here so she kind of starts putting two and two together she goes through like oh my gosh Maybe I can make this not be real. Like, can he not exist? But I don't want to give too much away on this book. To me, it was a, like, fun book. Except for the end, because y'all saw me about this here up a little bit. This book was giving me the feels. Like, it was just a, a fun, quick read to me. Like, it taught you a lot about growth and about how people change over time and they don't have to stay stagnant they don't have to stay the same it really touched on that and just how to get through life experiences and it was only like one little sad part in here but i was not expecting that sad part so it kind of caught me off guard but besides that it's just a really sweet heartfelt warming book i feel like it's just like something that you read in between other books i don't know if that makes sense like if i'm reading a serious book this is something i will pick up after a serious book so i did really really enjoy it i will give this four stars i love the beginning the middle and the end completely 
I'm not giving it a five star only because I was reading another light book. I feel like right before that I was only reading light books and then I decided to pick this up. And so it was just like too many light comfy books back to back to back to back if you feel me. So I still really 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 enjoyed it. I could not put again put I could not put it down. So yeah, I don't want to talk too long about it, but this is a really good book. A really good book. And I have the novel love story back there too. And I just don't know if it's gonna live up to the hype because I've been hearing different things about this book. Like it's not that good, and this is the better book by her. I don't know. I kind of like the ideal and the aspect of her going into a story, but I don't know. We'll see. Next we have Bride. I if you saw my TikTok or you watch my Instagram, you will get my true feelings like in the moment, my reaction of how I felt about this book. It's been a minute since I've read it now. And this book was so weird. Um, that's the least I can say about it. I was so bored. Oh, I'm trying not to be too harsh. I was I was just bored. I was bored throughout the very beginning of this book, probably about 50 to 60 percent in it started to pick up and get a little bit more interesting but the first beginning it was just it was nothing it was just nothing going on it had no depth the characters weren't really doing anything like this is supposed to be a build up a romance of of um not forced proximity um marriage of convenience you know so i'm expecting to see a lot of tension from these characters really wanted to build that relationship secretly and really wanted to get to know each other but they don't really know what's on the other person's mind and i just didn't feel that from these characters i really love misery she's really cool she's really independent she's been through a lot she's had to endure a lot and i love her for that and her banter is on point um but them as a couple just wasn't really doing it for me at all. I am more excited if she does make a second book. I am more excited to see what happens in that one because of how they left off. That was exciting. That was probably the only part in this book that was exciting. The ending. Okay. So for those of you who don't know, this book is about a vampire marrying a werewolf for their families you know kind of trying to keep the peace between families and that's the only way that they pretty much can do it at this point but she got she has to go live over there where the werewolves live at with him that means she is kind of putting her life in danger because you never know when one of them is gonna snap and going over there like it's a whole build-up which wasn't really a build-up to me but hey that's what they were giving off and she has to go over there and live and to protect her family. But she has ulterior motives. She didn't just get married because she cared about her family. There are other reasons why she married this man that are closer to her chest. So you will get to experience that. You will get to see why she did that. Like, I don't know. Also, knotting. This is my first experience with knotting. So I was completely caught off guard I, I think I need more of that in my life, though. We're going to say that I think I need more knotting in my life. I was completely confused. I'm like, what is going on? I, I've never experienced this. I, I, it, don't, it, it takes a lot. It takes a lot to shock me. But this shocked me. Like, what is happening inside this girl? I was going, oh, I don't even know. I don't want to write this bad. I don't. And the writing, I, I forgot to say, the writing was so different. Um, I think it was more like a fourth wing kind of point of view. So it kind of caught me off guard because I was really, I really think I would have liked it more if it would have been like a whole dual POV, you know. But instead it's coming from basically memory, the not memory, Lord, what's it? Misery the whole time. And then you get like little quotes of what? logan felt i think that was his name if i'm wrong sorry something like that <laughs> okay but anyways i'm gonna have to give that i'm gonna give it oh that's hard it was like the ending was good the whole nodding experience it was just like i shouldn't be bored that long in a book i'm gonna give it a three star it's a three star all right next we have the way i used to be this book is followed in four parts of Eden's story 
and it really goes from when she gets SA'd by a close person in their family throughout her years in high school and how it affected her. I was wanting to feel sad when I picked this up. <laughs> if you can't tell, like, who would pick this up just fine? So, I don't know. I've been wanting to read this for a minute. This book, I think, is so relatable, especially for high schoolers, because it brings so much depth to what teenagers go through in the cycle of each year or just it doesn't matter like everything can be kind of out of sequence but you go through so many rumors you go through people talking about you in this way that sometimes you kind of just adapt to what the hell they said because it's like if you're gonna talk badly about me you want to make up these things everybody believes it I might as well live it I might as well really do it and just that part I'm like it's so relatable to me now the things that this girl had to go through that you can see from the back of the book was heartbreaking but i already kind of had set myself up for knowing what this book was going to be about when i went into it it was very sad it was depressing <laughs> to say the least it hurts a lot to see this young kid go through this by somebody so close to the family and have and all the things she had to go through how she portrayed her mind or tried to trick her mind to think okay this is what I should do to get through this instead of you know it was a lot of different paths she could have taken but that is what her little brain was telling her which makes a lot of sense and just everything I love the love story that develops between her and I can't remember the the guy's name in this book but I really like him and I like how protective he is of her or was of her and I literally cannot wait I feel like I'm not all the way in yet because I need the other book and I'm waiting on it to the paperback copy to come out on Amazon and that's like November I think when that will be delivered so I am patiently waiting for the next one because I need to see her as a well-developed grown adult now and how she is experiencing life after she has unpacked all her trauma you know so i am excited and scared and a whole bunch of roller coaster of emotions for that book i have to give this probably a 4.5 stars i really really did enjoy this book next we have the pumpkin spice cafe honey this book is a TikTok hype if you ain't never saw one before. They have hyped this TikTok book up as the fall book of the year, I feel like. If y'all got some more fall books for me, please give me some recommendations. I think I got enough spooky stuff to read, but like this is really, really giving out fall, you know? So everybody, I feel like it's a lot of hate on this book on TikTok as well. But my take on this book is this is a vibes book. I don't think you were supposed to go into this book feeling like you were going to get some deeper meaning out of it. It wasn't supposed to take you through an emotional roller coaster. It wasn't supposed to do too much to you. It was just supposed to be a book because it's fall and it's vibes. <laughs> that is all the book is giving. It, like this girl has moved to a small town to get away from some things that were going on in her past and she has taken over her aunt's coffee shop she is going through some things while living in the coffee shop you know how those coffee houses be like you can live up stairs above it or something like that so she's living there she's hearing a lot of sound she thinks somebody's trying to murder her it's a lot this girl is over dramatic to say the least she is so freaking dramatic and i know they compared this book to gilmore girls and i do have some similarities here for you that i felt that i got from this character so genie like i said dramatic but funny like a comedic type of dramatic feeling you know what i'm saying so she is like over the top sarcastic but not trying to be funny like it's just a lot with her okay and i feel like laura from gilmore girls is like that too so in that way like her saying oh my gosh they're gonna murder me um they're gonna come in here and do like she's just saying uh crazy outrageous things throughout this book and like her mind is is conjuring up a million different scenarios of what could happen or what might happen or who it could be and like even like this so her mind 
So the dude that she she thought was about to murder her at the time is the dude who's going to be the main character. Main the dude who's going to be the main character. What's his name? Well, this dude is named Logan. So I don't think that dude name was Logan. I don't know. It might be two Logans, y'all. I I don't know. But this dude name is Logan, and he's the former there, and he he brings pumpkins and stuff to her, which he has always done for her aunt before then, but she didn't know beforehand. So she didn't know who was at her door, but then. She starts talking his ear off, and he is like a grumpy guy who, like, bro, I'm just here to drop out these pumpkins. I'm not trying to be hearing all this. Like, he trying to stay as far as possible away from any relationships or any women, period, okay? They're doing a stakeout one night. What with this stakeout? Because he was kind of, like, coaxed into doing it or whatever. Laid out a million different snacks for this, this stakeout. She got everything you can think of, and it's just so funny when she does that because they're like, dang... Let me see if I can find that part. So she had three different types of potato chips, corn chips, guac, pretzels in different shapes, jumbo sized bags of mini candy bars, um, Twizzlers, cookies. I think she had pizza. She had she had all type of stuff. And he was like, when he came in there, he was like, huh? What do we need all this food for? And she was like, I just wanted to make sure, you know, I thought we might get hungry while doing a steakhouse. He's like, not sure I've ever been that hungry, you know. So, it's kind of like her her brain was just running like they was going to need, really need that much food. And she does a whole, whole lot of things like that in this book. But as I was saying, I don't know how I got off on track like that. But what I was saying is people are rating this book very badly and saying a lot of bad things about it. Because I feel like they just expected too much out of it. I feel like this book was just supposed to be a cute little fancy book. Just cute. You weren't supposed to really take anything from it. You just supposed to cozy up, drink some hot chocolate or some hot coffee, read it, get the feels, get the cozy fall vibes, enjoy the coffee shop, enjoy the people in this town, enjoy the relationship as it evolves that's all you were supposed to get from this book and then you were supposed to go on about your day <laughs> that, that that is all i got from this book it was good though it was good i'll give it a 3.5 stars i'm saying it was good maybe maybe that's too low that is that too low look 3.75 stars okay it was not bad a quarter thorn and rosen we already know the hype and it took me forever to finally start this series but I'm so glad that I have. Sorry, guys. I had to go check on my kid because I heard him crying. But okay, I am back. So we're going to talk about this book now. Um, It definitely gave me what I thought it was going to give. Now, I know this was supposed to be the least favorite of the series. So I put myself into this world knowing that and that it was a Beauty and the Beast retelling. I don't feel like I really like retellings of Beauty and the Beast like that because it's just been done a lot. But I think this was perfectly done, just the right pace. It was such a different story and how everything entwined to come out for it to be a Beauty and the Beast retelling and set it up for so much more. I can't I can't even imagine what the rest of the books are going to be about or how the characters will evolve there and what I will get out of them, but I was so happy throughout the whole book. I could not put it down. And like y'all should already know what this book about, so I'm not telling y'all, but I was so surprised. Like I was so happy. I'm not going to say a lot about it. Just know I was so happy to read this book. And it was only one thing throughout this whole book that I wanted to happen. And I was not expecting them to actually do it in this book. And then I got it in the end. And I was like, yay! So, and the whole thing between Tamlin and Reese. I don't know who team I'm on yet. I know we're supposed to probably go to the other side, the other team in the next book. But... I don't know what I they're both so good I don't know how we're gonna pick how I'm gonna pick I'm so invested now in everybody Lucian I love him he's a day one writer oh my gosh I just know it's so much is gonna happen to her sisters I'm, I'm ready to experience so much more from them I don't know what to say about this book just know I love it and I'm gonna give it five stars I'm giving it five stars got a problem with it sue me I know when I was taking my hair down, I did talk about hunting Adeline and hunting Adeline. 
and those books are just disgusting okay i love me some smut addie's just freaking annoying addie is annoying now, i'm gonna put the books up here Addie is so freaking annoying and Zayd is annoying in the first whole book. I wanted to DNF it so bad, but I pulled through because everybody was saying the next book would be good. It's just like everything about this girl reeks of stupid. Like she wants the worst things to happen to her and gets the thrill from them. And don't even get me started on a gun scene. Like who wants that in real life? But I know my brain, I guess, ain't supposed to really be thinking about that. And him being half good guy, half I want to be a stalker is just like giving me confusing, okay? But the next one was a lot better to me. But all in all, the side character stories were way more exciting than the main characters. That's all I can say. I'm more excited to read Sibby's story. I need to find out what happened to Molly. I am invested in them only at this point. But we're not going to say a lot about them because those books, I was just trying to get through them at that point because, so I'm not really going to give them a rating. They're like, why did I even read this? I'm, I'm still confused about them, honestly. What is the other book that I read? So I just finished All I Wanted, All I Needed by A.E. Valdez on Audible. And one of my favorite narrators on, is on it, Winston James. He's that day one, A1, Winston James. He kills every book he reads. If you haven't read one by him yet, what are you doing? I really love this book. And it was giving me a little bit of fall because let me just tell you, this girl, what's her name? <laughs> Forgot already. I know he calls her Sunshine. Harlow. Harlow is going through a breakup. She gets the opportunity to be a yoga instructor in another state. So she abruptly moves there and starts to be a yoga instructor. Even though she really doesn't want to do it, it's just a great opportunity and a good way to uh, just find herself. So she gets to live in her aunts and uncles, guest house. She is working part time in their coffee shop to help them out. And she's also doing yoga. And she meets this dude, which is a friend's brother who she teaches yoga or does yoga with or whatever. And she comes, her friend comes to the coffee shop and she brings her brother with her. And she's like, oh, who is this fine man? And then she gives him both some coffee. She finds out it's her brother. And then he's going to be like, this coffee is burnt with an attitude. Like he was rude. He was so rude. Like who talk? Don't talk about my coffee. What are you doing? And he's just giving me schoolboy, schoolgirl, when you know they running around pulling your pigtails type vibes, like throughout the whole book. He's just like being mean and rude to her. And that's his way of being her friend and a way to let her know he likes her. And just doing little stupid, cute things. That's if you can call it that. So I really did enjoy this book. It was giving the feels it was giving the vibes because like i said the coffee shop was there and it was a big part of the book of them always meeting up at the coffee shop and she and him like they're super cute and i'm kind of excited to read the other three books or the other at least two books because the third one i saw what it was about and i'm not sure i'm so interested in asher but Yes, this book was great. I'm going to give it five stars. I can't think of anything bad about this book. My last book is Flock. Flock. Why did I read you? Why did I read you? I'm glad I didn't buy the physical book because I would. it would have been a disappointment. This whole book was about nothing but smut. Them sharing her. The whole book is about them sharing her nothing else the best thing i can say about this book is the part about dominic dominic loving reading and what he did when he got her to read with him now that was fire okay that is the only thing in this whole book i can say was giving spicy and nice and i love dominic for that and that's the only reason i like him <laughs> i ain't nothing else giving at it like he got a home library full of books that is the only reason i like him and then it goes into the other book so stupid bro like this other the way the next book is set up 
I know people are saying you got to go through the, the second and third to really understand it. Then it's all going to come together like two plus two plus two. And then you're going to understand everything. I don't know if I'm that emotionally invested to continue on, honestly. I know I, I wasn't just reading a book just for smut. I'm telling you right now. I, I really thought something serious is serious. I can't even talk. Something serious was going to happen because I could have swore this was like a mystery it was something. Oh, I don't know. But Flock is about a girl who has to go live at her dad's company. I can't even remember her name because that's how much of unimportance this book was. I'm trying to see. Let me just go look it up. Let me stop being like that, huh? Let me do the work. <laughs> Cecilia, darling. She comes to move with her dad because she has to learn the ropes of his company in order to inherit his company and money, I think, when he retires or dies or something like that. And she has to leave her mom, who is poor and, like, lives life in a kind of a wild way where she acts more like a child than an adult. Like, her mom is a lot of things, but she also took very good care of her in ways. So it's a lot of trauma with her mom, but she also loves her mom. A lot of trauma with her dad. I don't think she loves her dad. <laughs> I don't know. But the whole thing is her having to go there for a year. To learn the ropes of the company. So she does that. Meet this dude. He said hey let's go to my party. The first day. Orientation I think. First day of starting a job. A dude that's in her class. Says hey you want to go to this party? She goes to this party. And then she. <laughs> she goes to this party. Gets drinks. Meets Dominic. As well as the other dude that invited her to the party. And it's just, I don't even know how to explain it. Because there was no depth. There was no substance. Yeah. So I'm going to leave that there. I'm not going to rate this one either until I read. Unless I read the other two books. The other. But, 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 yes, I want to at least try to give it a fair chance to read the other book. At least one other book before I decide to rate this one. But that is it for my wrap up. Ooh, it's been a heck of a day, guys. I hope you guys are doing so well and that you're having a good day. Y'all are enjoying all the fall vibes, including coffee or hot chocolate or tea, whatever, whatever's your thing. Going to bookstores, going to fall um, pumpkin patches. What else is out there? Fall festivals trick-or-treating picking out halloween costumes going to halloween parties whatever it is that you like to do during the fall i'm hoping why i'm hoping that you guys enjoying it okay so i will see you guys in the next video love you